Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by C.J. Vogel, Jerry Hamilton, Rod Babers, all of us here. Uh, it is time for the On Texas Football Season Prediction Show. Uh, that's right. We're going to talk about every single game and give you guys our final uh, thoughts before uh, the year one week away exactly uh, from when the uh, games start next week against Colorado State. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it, and let's start with uh, the folks over in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. Colorado State coming off a 5-7 and seven season. Jay Norvell brings the Rams to town. Uh, CJ, I'm going to start with you. I want to know just win, loss, anything to look for in this game. Yeah, I, I think this is one Texas uh, rolls away with the victory. And, of course, uh, this will be a good test early on in my eyes to how improved that secondary will be in 2024, right? We look back at Braden Fowler and Nicolosi's season in 2023, and there's going to be two things, right? They're going to be tested vertically through the air. They like to throw the ball a lot. Uh, Fowler and Nicolosi had, I believe, the 16th most passing yards of any quarterback in the country a year ago, but he also threw 16 interceptions. So, uh, we talk about the opportunistic defense. I want to see if they show up and take advantage of that, but it's a win for Texas. Win for Texas. Jerry Hamilton, what do you think, bud? Win, cover the 33 and a half if that's where the number's at. Um, Colorado State will run out of Gatorade and salt tablets. Um, <laughs> they are, by the second half, these dudes are going to be tongues dragging. Um, on a 100,000-degree field. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's going to be a talent mismatch. I think the Texas defense, um, the defensive front, look, this isn't a game that you have to go stop the run in the box. This is a game where you play in Colorado State's backfield, and I think Texas will wear them out. We'll see early if they can get a pass rush going. Rob, what about you, bud? Yeah, Colorado State's pretty one-dimensional. Um, and with Texas' improved pass rush this year, I expect them to get some some – really lofty sack numbers early on in this game, in this matchup. So, yes, Texas wins. Uh, they'll get a good test in the pass defense, but Texas rolls. Uh, I'm going to just follow suit and say Texas wins uh, against Colorado State. Uh, Longhorns com coming off a 12-2 and two season. Colorado State, to y'all's point, 5-7 and seven a year ago. And even with Torrey Horton that uh, Rod mentions, I saw him play last year against Colorado, and he literally turned Colorado inside out in that game. Uh, he will be a talented player and could play for Texas easily, but I think he may be the only one that would start or compete for a starting job on the team. Uh, at this point, Texas, we need to see if they get their offense and defense rolling first week of the season because guess what? Week two, the Longhorns go to Michigan. These are the defending national champion Wolverines. Uh, and I, guys, I, I want to start with Rob. We're going to go counterclockwise now here on the – on the, uh, the the dial. Rod, I'm going to start with you. And, you know, this is one of those games, I think, that is do or die on a schedule. And what I mean by that is it doesn't really have anything to do with who's going to win the SEC or possible SEC championship game. But it's very similar to the Alabama game a year ago. It was yep. a big non-conference game, marquee matchup, second week of the season too, by the way. Uh, where are you going with Texas versus the Wolverines? Uh, they they won the national championship a year ago. Yeah, won the national title, but unprecedented losses, right, for a for a defending national champion considering lost your head coach and lost all the pieces that Jim Harbaugh took with him and, you know, a ton of guys drafted as well. This is one that can go either way for me. This is kind of a, you know, I could end up changing my mind right before kickoff with this. I'm going to go with Texas. Sark has got his guys – uh, really well prepared for these big time non conference games. I know he's been putting in the prep uh, for this Michigan team. That's part of bringing in Scott Hazelton, uh, who was the defensive coordinator at Michigan State for three years. So he knows Michigan really well. So you at least you got a leg up in the preparation there. And I like that move by Sark. Uh, I don't know what Michigan's offense is going to look like. I know that defense is going to be a top 10 defense. Got the best corner in college football, best D tackle doing college football. I cannot wait to see what the offensive game plan is against that defense. So if, if Quinn Ewers and a lot of those Texas players, Kelvin Banks and Isaiah Bond, they want to impress the NFL scouts, this is the game because you'll be going up against NFL talent. Texas wins, but, man, it's a game-winning drive. Burt Arvin field goal on the road, that kind of game where it's going to come down potentially to the last drive. Jerry, what do you think, bud? 
my first thought is we're going to look back in three years and there's going to be more show causes handed out than Michigan had returning starters in this game. <laughs> so that's my first thing. Uh, but when we get to the game itself, um, look, this is the opposite of Colorado State. Michigan thinks they're going to bully Texas straight out of the stadium, period, end of story. If, if Texas – answers the call physically, and they protect Quinn. I think Texas is the better team. Um, I, I'm picking Texas to win. Um, there's some similarities to the Alabama game last year, not all the way because Texas was more experienced on offense. But I'll say this. The, the other question for Michigan I have, they thrived in a chaotic situation last year because it was them against the world. We're going to win one for the Gipper, Jim Harbaugh, on the way out the door. He was going to leave you, Michigan players. But they put, rallied the troops, everything, the university and everything, man. They closed the doors and they played for the cause. And they won the national championship. And they did have the best team. How are they going to thrive in similar chaos this year? New, think, new boss. New boss. Uh, yep. Different coaches along every position, I think, on defense. CJ, what do you think? I, I have Texas going 2-0 and here. And, again, uh, a number of reasons here. Uh, we could go through everybody Michigan lost. In fact, I'm going to. Head coach, starting quarterback, leading receiver, leading uh, rusher, number three receiver, the entire offensive line, a pair of edges, and four really important pieces from that secondary, not to include also their leading tackler from a year ago. Yes, the interior defensive line is the best in the country. Yes, they have the best cornerback in the country as well. But if this game ever opens up, I severely question – if Michigan's going to be able to keep it close. At the end of the day, I'm going to rely on the offensive line that's been there and done that with Texas is coming back four out of five starters and the quarterback that's been on the road and won big games as well. I'm leaning with Quinn Ewers. I'm leaning with that offensive line. I'm thinking Texas wins by uh, by 10 to 13. 10 to 13. There you go. Yeah. That, that's same blueprint as last year, Bobby, against Alabama. I, all right. So I'm going to go Texas loses. I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the one that says it's one and one. Guys, last year, the long last year, Washington, we know how good that offense was from Washington, right? We all think it's pretty special. Well, they have a quarterback and a receiver go in the top 10. They had two other quarterback or two other receivers go. They had two offensive tackles go. Michigan held that Washington team to 13 points in the national championship game. 13 points. Yes, Michigan lost some guys. Okay. But the two that gave Washington, the most trouble are back. And that's, those are the two defensive tackles as well as the cornerback. I, I'm going with uh, Michigan here, and I think it's going to be – I thought you were saying it. you were wanting it to be 10 to 13 uh, as a final score, but you're saying Texas is going to win by 10 to 13. I think the first team really that to 17 wins this game. Hmm. That's what I think. And so I'm looking at like 17-14, 17-13. Uh, that's how good I think Michigan's defense might be able to be. I know I'm going to get railed on the com in the comments here. I'll live with it. Right now, I've got Texas one and one. UTSA is the next one. Texas goes back home. Bobby, Go I, I DM Connor Stallions. He said Texas in the points. <laughs> okay. UTSA, Jerry Hamilton. UTSA comes in nine and four a year ago. Jeff Trailer. Has got a little something brewing in San Antonio. He's been a very successful head coach there at UTSA thus far. Gave Texas some problems two years ago in Austin, uh, but he finally loses his, like, 18th-year quarterback, Frank Harris. Uh, CJ, I'll start with you. What do you think of the uh, Roadrunners against uh, the Longhorns in this one? Yeah, when these two team, these two programs first met a few years ago for Sarkeesian and Trailer, uh, what was the story of the first half? Well, UTSA kept it pretty close because they dominated the time of possession. I believe their first drive of the game, Bobby, was about 14 plays, uh, maybe lasted 10-plus minutes. I mean, it, it completely dominated the time of possession. And as a, as a result, they shrunk the game, they limited possessions, and they did not allow Texas and Quinn Ewers and Steve Sarkeesian to get into rhythm, right? Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Texas has more talent across each position on the field than what we saw in the past. As a result, I think Texas 
this should be a win. What's going to be difficult is to get up for a game right after Michigan, whether you win or lose in Ann Arbor. They're going to come ready to play. Those emotions for Texas better be up, but I think Texas should come away with this uh, win pretty easily in that second half. Just too much talent than what we've seen in the past. Jerry, what do you have? I think Jeff Trailer will be cheering for Texas to beat Michigan. His best chance is if Texas beats Michigan. The if old Texas, Wyoming redo, basically. Yes, is if Texas is. is coming off a loss, yes. that's not good for Jeff Trailer. My biggest thing in this is, yeah, for, like you said, Bobby, Frank Harris is gone. Well, Trey Moore is gone, too, by the way. Um, they, they can't replace that guy at UTSA. But here's the biggest difference. When this game was played two years ago, Sark was barely getting the talent in the program. There's going to be a massive talent difference now. And that doesn't mean UTSA doesn't have some good players because Jeff Trailer and that staff evaluate and do a great job over there. It's a really well-coached team. I like Texas by at least two touchdowns uh, in this game, um, maybe by 24, 27 points. CJ Wynn, Jerry Wynn, I'm marking you down. Rod Babers? Uh, I got a win too, but I'll say I got a – Tremendous amount of respect for Coach Trailer as a ball coach. When they played Texas, and CJ's right, they played Texas a couple of years ago. He really did lay out a really good blueprint for going up against Sark. He will find some type of vulnerability yeah. with Texas. That's what Jeff Trailer does. He won't be able to maximize uh, that, like Jerry said. He won't be able necessarily to do it for four quarters. But early on, that initial game plan, watch it. Uh, UTSA has eight seniors on defense. Mm -hmm. Four of their five offensive linemen are seniors. The fifth one's a redshirt junior. Owen McCown's a transfer, uh, East Texas kid from Colorado. Good team, makings of a conference title. I think that Texas should win this game, though, because of what exactly what Jerry said, talking about talent disparity. I think Texas probably has a little, just a little bit more firepower. By the way, they're tight end. Don't forget their tight end. It's the same guy, Oscar Cardenas. He was hard for Texas. Yep. He was hard for Texas. All right, the next game, and I'm going to start this one for us, guys. ULM. Uh, if Texas doesn't win this one, we're in trouble. They won their first two games a year ago and then lost 10 in a row. I think I counted eight games where they didn't score more than 20 points. Uh, I don't want us to spend too much time on this. Everybody no, thinks that's a win for the Longhorns. Against yeah. two and ten ULM, any thoughts? This will be yeah. the largest point difference of the season. Okay, mm -hmm. Arch Manning throws for two hundred yards. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Rod score does, scores irrelevant. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah they win. Everybody, no they roll. Everybody mm -hmm. win. Okay, all right. That leads to the very next week. Texas, after having two home games in a row against UTSA and ULM, they take on Mississippi State. Uh, the uh, Bulldogs, uh, five and seven a year ago, got rid of Zach Arnett, bring in Jeff Levy, the former Oklahoma offensive coordinator, Baylor assistant as well. Uh, what do we think he's going to try to remake this offense of Baylor's uh, Blake Shapin is now their starting quarterback? Man, they, they were decimated, though, by graduation, by transfer portal, et cetera. Um, Texas in the SEC opener in DKR should take care of business, in my opinion. Two to three touchdowns would be uh, about what you might think. Uh, we'll see what the line is eventually. Uh, but Texas in its SEC inaugural should come away with a win. Rod, you're next. Uh, the only, you know, there's no concern here. Texas will have a tremendous uh, talent advantage. Uh, but that that veer and shoot system, that veer and shoot offensive philosophy, I will say that I believe starts like 500 versus those guys because that's your Kendall Browse, uh, Jeff Levy's in that category too. Um, and also throwing it out there, like you're talking about this matchup, Blake Shapin has had, you know, some mild, you know, success versus Texas in games. So both of these, the coach and the quarterback, they will be coming from a place of optimism, glass half full, because they've had some success versus Texas uh, in some way, form, or fashion back in the Big 12. So I think Texas rolls, but Jeff Levy will have the offense. Uh, he, will, he will basically have the offense, I think, clicking a little bit. But Texas overall, I mean, they, they'll fare well because they don't have enough weapons to really threaten Texas. Jerry? Yeah, so what's interesting about Mississippi State, look, I think Texas will win the game, uh, a couple of touchdowns. 
one of my big takeaways from this game is going to be this will be the first time that Texas fans say, does every team in the SEC real, – they really do have players that are this big and this athletic. Because Mississippi State is not a top half of talent level in the SEC, but they're going to have a lot of big dudes that are good athletes. Then they'll have, they'll have probably 10, 12 NFL draft picks on that team on some level. They may be younger and obviously – um, Jeff Levy will try to run the football, be effective enough in the run game to protect his quarterback. Because I, I think this is when people are going to start to realize Texas pass rush is real. DJ? They only have two returning starters. I don't think you have a real idea from a year ago with the new system and the returners to have a true identity for Mississippi State right now. With that said, they do have to play an SEC foe before Texas, so you will get their best look on paper and on film of what they can be capable of. With that said, the top-end talent that Texas will see in the SEC, I think that's void of that Mississippi State uh, roster at the moment. They could catch fire in some games. I don't think it'll be against Texas, especially with that familiarity with the levy offense that Texas and PK are all familiar with, dating back uh, to Oklahoma. All right, uh Speaking of Oklahoma, <laughs> yeah, good uh, Texas, segue. You're welcome. Mississippi State, it's an off week, and then we head to the Cotton Bowl, mm. right? Uh, and get going here against OU. Uh, a year ago, uh, the Sooners were uh, ten and three, uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good team overall if you really look at it. Uh, but the bit, the win against the Longhorns in the Cotton Bowl had to be the highlight of the season. For Brent Venables, it kind of announced his arrival as the head coach at o Oklahoma after a very suspect first year. Um, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start, guys, if you don't mind. Go for it, Bobby. Texas wins yeah. convincingly. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't want to say it's going to be 21 to 10 or 35 to 24 or whatever. Texas wins convincingly. This is a big game for Quinn Ewers. It's a big game for Steve Sarkeesian. It's a big game for every senior on the Texas roster who saw what could have been last year slip from their palm or slip out of their fingertips. Texas wins convincingly. Not going to predict the score, but that's where I'm at. Uh, CJ, you go for it next. Yeah, Bobby, I'm with you. I, I think this is a game Texas, I know they've had multiple games, I don't want to say circled on the calendar, but they've certainly been thinking about that game against Oklahoma and, and certainly the way in which they lost it and it slept out of their fingertips. I do think that the Texas offense with Quinn Ewers being back there versus what's expected of Jackson Arnold north of the Red River, uh, uh, two different sides of the turnover spectrum right now. I know Quinn had a pair of turnovers trio turnovers a year ago. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case this year, despite Oklahoma having a very talented defense, having some really impressive game changers on that side of the ball. I think Texas will be able to get pressure on that makeshift offensive line. And I do think Jackson Arnold's going to turn the ball over pretty often. Uh, I think as a result of that, Texas wins the turnover battle. They win that game. Jerry. Yep. You look, I got Texas winning the game. What's interesting about Oklahoma is there going to either be a really confident team going into this game or one that's looking at each other a little bit? Because they have Tennessee and at Auburn the two weeks before the off week. They're going to be pretty battle-tested. Then they have an off week. Then they have Texas. And I want to lead Rod into this point. This is the first game on the Texas schedule where the secondary is truly going to be tested. And where is the Texas secondary at? I'm not sure we're going to truly have the answer headed into the game. I think we'll walk out of the game with the answer because Oklahoma, Nick Anderson's going to play 10 years in the NFL. I don't care if he's not in the mock drafts now. He's going to be a first or second round guy. No question. Andrew Anthony, Deion Burks, you got to be good in special teams against Oklahoma as well. But, Rod, I think the secondary with Texas is going to be big in this game and pass rush. Did you have a win, though? Oh, yeah, I've got a win. When, all right, Rod, uh, Jerry's asking about the secondary. Then give us your uh, prediction, if you don't mind. Yeah, I think Oklahoma's got one of the best receiving cores they'll see all year. There's no doubt about that. question is, can Jackson Arnold, does he have enough time to give him the football? Um, and can he kind of lower the risk um, element in his game? Because he's definitely a high-reward player. And also something that you mentioned, Jerry, that I think Longhorn fans remember really well in those two losses last year. The, the, the quarterback run game played a huge role. Dylan Gabriel, that's that was kind of his 
uh, to me, I think that was kind of the tendency yeah. breaker. We had never seen him run the football like that. And then, and then Michael Penix actually had a couple of quarterback draws thrown in there. We know that that's something, it's an element I think Oklahoma will use too. I think they'll be tested. I don't know if the offensive line is going to give him enough time. I love that defense though in the back seven, man. They got playmakers uh, all throughout that defense with Stutzman and Billy Bowman's uh, one of the best defenders in the country. Texas wins, but I think it's going to be a little bit tighter than most people think because uh, it's just a rivalry game, and I think Oklahoma's going to come to play. I will say this. If Texas gives up 34 again in this game like they did a year ago, they're going to they're going to be people on the war path. I'll put it that way. All right, Georgia uh, is next. Immediately after OU, I tell you what, can't uh, you know? There are some things that you might say. Well, this is the worst time for Georgia to come because it's after this big emotional game uh, a week earlier. But if you win that game and maybe you you're 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 get, you're you're uh, feeling pretty high about uh, the victory over the Sooners, maybe this is the perfect time. Uh, to catch the Bulldogs. Uh, Rod, I want you to tell tell us what you think of this game uh, and give us your prediction. Yeah, um, this is my first loss of the season for the Longhorns. I mean, this is a team offensively. There's some people that believe this might be one of the best Georgia offenses that they've had, that Kirby Smart has had there, especially on the offensive line in the trenches. Uh, Carson Beck, based on some of the mock drafts, he's projected to be the top pick in the upcoming draft at the quarterback position, not just the quarterback position, but overall. Um, I think it's going to be a tight game, but the lines of scrimmage, Georgia can match you, um, even exceed what you can do uh, in the trenches, and that's one of the advantages Texas will have in most of their matchups they have uh, this upcoming season. You won't have that advantage versus Georgia. So I'll take Georgia uh, with the with the win here, my first loss of the season for the Longhorns. Jerry Hamilton. If Kirby takes the car keys away from the team, they're going to be really good. I mean, we know that, right? I mean, <laughs> if, he, if he tells them to take Lyft and Uber everywhere, they're going to be really good. But here's the thing Texas has. It's kind of a double-edged sword. If you look at Georgia's schedule, at Alabama, Auburn at home, Mississippi State at home, and then Texas. So this is a team whose off week comes after Kentucky before Bama. So they're well into the SEC schedule, but that's a fourth game in a row against Texas, against uh, against at big 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 humans in the SEC. I if Georgia's the best team in the country this year as they're ranked, I think it's going to be because they have the best offensive line in the country. And if you have the best offensive line in the country, that travels. I'm going to take Georgia to win the game, as long as there's not something that could change between now and the start of the season, as long as there are not more cracks in that program than we know right now. If there's players suspended, if, if a couple of things start happening, that's what could change Georgia's season to me. Because talent-wise, when you have an offensive lineman that has seven guys who are going to play six to ten years in the NFL, you have a quarterback that may be the one-one guy. You run back, you have more athleticism at running back than your two national championship teams. You may not have – uh, brought virus, but you have NFL tight ends. Then you turn around on defense, you have the best safety in the country. Um, they have a, a guy that doesn't even start at linebacker, Jalen Walker, who if he plays off the edges, may be the best pass rusher in the country. I mean, that's the talent level Georgia has right now. They're not as dominant on the defensive front as they were on their two national title teams. Not even close. They got mid-round players. This is an offensive line game. Whichever offensive line steps up and owns the game is going to win the game. I'm going to take Georgia uh, unless there's some more cracks in, in the ceiling than we know right now. CJ? Yeah, I'm rocking with Georgia as well. Uh, this is the one game, again, I look at the schedule, and you can point to who Georgia had to play beforehand, but I know that none of those games, and unless it's Florida the week before, uh, is, is going to amount to the hype and kind of the intensity emotionally of what Texas and Oklahoma had the week before. To come off of that game and have to go back home to play Georgia – uh, that's tough. And for that reason, again, I look at the Georgia depth chart. What's the weakness for Georgia, right? We've had that conversation throughout uh, with the fine comb with the Texas. Can they stop the run? Can they replace Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy? What about the cornerbacks? Do they have a, a, a running game that can match up with the SEC elites now that they've had to deal with a couple of injuries? That's kind of the issues on Texas's side. I know that Georgia's, uh, you know, kind of those issues have all come off the field well, that depth chart right now is is up there with Ohio State's as the best in the entire country. I lean right now that they're 
the, the favorite in the SEC. And as a result, I think they come to, to DKR and they escape with a win. You guys now have – that's your first loss in the season, all three of you. Yeah. Uh, for Texas, six and one uh, now in the campaign, seven games in. I also picked Georgia to win this game. I think this is the first game where Texas's rotation by committee along the defensive front actually truly gets exposed. Hmm. Like there's a possibility it gets exposed against Michigan, but I think it's going to be early enough in the season. There won't be any early season injuries yet. But as that all, as that defensive line gets nicks and cuts and bumps and bruises and gets a little thinner, that's when that Georgia offensive line, which is the best Texas, we'll see this year, in my opinion. That's when they're going to uh, make hay. Uh, that puts me uh, seven games in at five and two. The next game is up in Nashville. Longhorns head to uh, uh, Nashville to play Vanderbilt. Uh, look, uh, Clark Lee, the head coach at Vanderbilt, is coaching for his job. I mean, as most – most coaches are at Vanderbilt every third year, basically. Um, and, I, and I think that this is just only natural. If the Longhorns, uh, as long as nothing is just categorically amiss, the Longhorns should make it into Nashville and escape unscathed, win by a couple of touchdowns at least. Uh, Vanderbilt likes to keep it close with about two or three SEC opponents a year. Yeah. Most of that happens when they're at home and people are overlooking them. But I don't think Texas is going to overlook Vanderbilt in part because the next week Texas has a bye. And so they know they get the bye the next week. They better not be overlooking an opponent like Vanderbilt. CJ, your thoughts? I think it's a win. I think for the long, you know, the last decade or so, you've looked at Vanderbilt the same way that you looked at Kansas in the Big 12. The issue is Kansas had a, a game-changing, game-breaking quarterback that helped elevate that roster over the last few years. He's going to do, do tremendous in the Big 12. Vanderbilt doesn't quite have that. They've been recruiting better. They've been evaluating better. Uh, they're still a ways away from competing with the top rosters in the SEC, even with you know, some stadium renovations coming in Nashville, Bobby. It's not the environment that you're yet to see uh, make a difference in these conference games. Texas wins pretty easily. I think that you'll see Arch Manning very early in that game. Uh, Jerry Hamilton? Yeah, I was just looking at what time the Grand Ole Opry starts on that night. 7 p.m., uh, yeah. Texas fans will be there comfortably. Uh, Texas will win the game uh, for the reasons that uh, Bobby, you mentioned it, it won't be a lack of focus game. Look, it may be a slow start game, though, uh, for Texas coming off Oklahoma um, and uh, then Georgia. Uh, but the interesting, the, the one thing that you wonder about in that game is the transfer quarterback uh, from New Mexico State. It's actually a really good player and actually has really good player. maybe more feet, right? More feet um, can make some plays with his feet, but uh, not going to be enough. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Texas rolls. Uh, Jerry's right. I think his name is Diego Pavia. Yeah. Uh, dual threat. Uh, had a 1,000 yards rushing actually last year. Yeah, that would be the only concern, only, I think, player you need to game plan around a little bit. Yeah, I think they're, they're in a transition year, if you will, as a program. If I think they always seem to be in that transition year. I think Texas rolls big time. Yeah. I got to say this real quick. Uh, the one thing that is possible here, they could be coming off of a win the previous week. They've yeah. got Ball State uh, on the 19th of October. They played Texas on the 26th. So, uh, makes... Sands, they'll have a homecoming uh, a hangover. Yeah, maybe so. That'll be their homecoming game. That, no doubt. Not Texas, but Ball State. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, next game on the schedule for Texas is actually a bye. I should say the next week is a bye like we talked about. Then the Horns host Florida, the Gators. Uh, we don't know where Billy Napier is going to be, if it's going to be in the coaching box or down in Key West, retired right. uh, by this game. But they have talent, guys. Do not mistake a bad football team for a talentless football team yep. or a beat-down mentally football team based on their uh, schedule this year. Both of those things can be true. Um, I'm going with a win over Florida at home, coming off the bye week. Uh, Florida is going to be coming right off a game against Georgia. Yes. And so they're going to, and that's a big, big game for them. And if Napier doesn't win that, there is a large likelihood he's not the head coach when they arrive in Austin. 
Uh, Rod, your your game thoughts on uh, Texas versus Florida? Yeah, uh, I mean, Florida's got <clears throat> the, the hardest schedule in the country pretty much, and that team's going to be beat up by the time. They, but everybody will be beat up by that time in the season, but Florida could be uh, beat up even more so than everybody else because of the elite teams they have to play on that schedule. Graham Mertz, actually, I like better than most. We talked about it, uh, uh, CJ and I. I mean, completed 72% of his passes uh, uh, last year, which was uh, one of the SEC leaders. If he takes a leap this year, that could be interesting. I'm not saying that they're going to you know, pull the upset over Texas or anything, but he can make it interesting because they do have some talent in the receiving core. Uh, but ultimately, Texas should make quick work of, of Florida, considering the state the team's going to be in at that time. Jerry? Yeah, so Steve Spurrier apparently picked Florida to win nine games today. And who am I to bet against Steve Spurrier? Well, I am. Um, so um, I think Steve was looking at last year's schedule, um, but he's still a great coach, and we'll all enjoy going to Spurrier's Bar and Grill in the year when Texas plays at Florida. But, look, they're coming off the Georgia game. Uh, that is a – they may still be licking wounds because Kirby will run it up in that game if he has a chance, by the way. Um, that's the history of that game. Spurrier did it. So that that happens in this game. Their offensive line, if their portal guys on the offensive line aren't hits for them, that's going to be their Achilles heel this year in my estimation. I'll say this, though. Eugene Wilson will be the best slot receiver Texas plays this year. He is a future high draft pick. He is really, really, really good. Um, that will be a game that Texas actually has to tackle well. Tackling will be important in that game because they may not have – the explosivity as a roster that some other teams do on offense, but they, they're going to have two or three guys that if you don't get them to the ground, they're going to make chunk yards plays against you. But I take Texas to win the game by 10, 14 points. I agree, Jerry. I think it'll be a little closer than what you would, would think reputationally coming into the season for both teams. What the biggest difference maker is for me is uh, similarly to how Texas and it has to play, you know, Georgia and Oklahoma back to back. For for Florida, it's going to be the back end of a really really emotional game in Jacksonville against Georgia. That's going to be tough to get that emotion and intensity up again to go on the road to play Texas, where, you know, a little later in the season, but it's still going to be pretty uh, pretty hot. I, again, I I just think at that point in the year, Texas will also coming off of a bye is very beneficial there as well. They'll get the mind right. They'll have an extra week to prepare, get those kids uh, a week off coming off of uh, that trip to Nashville. I have Texas to win. But I do think it will be a little bit closer than most imagine. Graham Mertz, veteran quarterback, you know, he's been around for, for 10 yep. years almost, right? You know, he, he doesn't turn the ball over, and he completes passes. So that's all you can ask for for a guy that's not necessarily a true game changer at the quarterback position. If they can keep him up right for the rest of the season. I, I would not be surprised for Texas to see DJ Lagway by that time of the year if the Florida offensive line uh, cannot uh, keep uh, Graham Mertz upright. All right, uh, this is uh, now getting into an interesting part of the schedule. Uh, Texas heads to Fayette. Fayette Nam, as uh, some people mm -hmm. back in the 60s used to call it. Uh, Longhorns uh, trying to uh, go up against a, a Sam Pittman-led team that was – Four and eight a year ago, and they lost their quarterback, K.J. Jefferson, uh, to UCF. And Jefferson was the heart and soul of that uh, Arkansas team for three years. Uh, beat the tar out of Texas in Fayetteville the last time Texas showed up there. Um, this is a, a emotional game. What I am concerned with here is Arkansas has a bye yeah. the week before Texas comes to town. There is no doubt in my mind Bobby Petrino, the offense coordinator at Arkansas, will have something cooked up for the Longhorns. Uh, got two weeks to do it. If Bobby Tr Petrino isn't the actual head coach at that time, because it looks like uh, Arkansas can lose five games before they even play Texas, uh, possibly six. They have a key early season matchup against Oklahoma State uh, that if they lose that one, they could lose. They could be down to six losses before they even play Texas, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, so, uh, Rob, where do you go with this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I think it actually could potentially be uh, a game that's problematic, just because 
You play at Arkansas. I think it's going to be a mostly charged environment. We know that uh, from the last time Longhorns were there. Longhorns will be ready because uh, last time they weren't ready for that matchup. I think they'll be ready for that hostile environment. But you'll still get it because, as Sark pointed out, they hate Texas more than they love themselves. They just don't have the talent they once had. Uh, but I do think ultimately they just don't have the offensive weapons uh, that I think to be able to keep up with Texas once Texas decides, you know, when Texas starts to separate from them. So we'll see what Bobby Petrino has. I will say he does like his quarterback that he brought in. Yes. Um, and that 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 chemistry, he, apparently the reports are that he sought after this young man, Taylor Green, the transfer quarterback, yep. that he actually went – and that that was his first, and that he was, uh, he actually had his first offer out of high school came from Bobby Petrino when he was at I was at Southern uh, Southern State. Missouri State. So, so that potentially could be a problem because apparently Petrino really likes his quarterback. Yeah. So what's interesting about Arkansas is it's the same thing with Florida. Is Sam Pittman going to be the head coach? They play at Oklahoma State, at Auburn, A and M, Tennessee, LSU, at Mississippi State. Ole Miss before Texas, where are they going to be as a team, where their head's going to be at? Uh, we know where the fans are going to be. At. Now, I couldn't find Arkansas's basketball schedule. If anybody, if if the basket, if, if they're having a rough season, are they going to transition to John Calipari, even though Texas is coming to town? Probably not. I actually think this is one of those games like Mississippi State where you say, maybe the Texas fans say, man, does everybody in this league have really big athletic guys on both fronts? Yeah, the answer is going to be yes. Um, I do think Texas will win the game by – look, not to say this Texas, this Texas team is going up there to avenge that ugly loss um, in, in Sark's uh, first year, but uh, I do think Texas will win the game by a couple of touchdowns, 17 points, because I, do th- I think this is a game where the offense is really going to be clicking at this point of the season. Everybody's going to have figured out who they are. I think you're going to have Ryan Wingo being a playmaker by that time. I think you're going to have Quinn on the same page with all his wide receivers, Amari Nyblack. This is the point of the season. It needs to happen earlier, but where I think the offense is going to start hitting on all cylinders because all these guys that have come into the program are now going to have a number of games under the belt. Texas offense is going to be more dangerous late in the season than early in the season because of that this year. CJ? Yeah, uh, this is going to have to be a, a, a life-saving coaching job by Sam Pittman. Right. And I say that because what was Arkansas's MO whenever Texas played originally? Well, they're going to beat you up front with that offensive line. They're going to have the quarterback run. Rocket Sanders is going to run. You're going to get run all over. And then, of course, they're going to hit the play deep against with Traylon Burks. Right. You know, that was kind of the MO in which Texas saw in 2021. Well, that offense line was horrible in 2023. Right. Their leading rusher was KJ Jefferson, who then departed for UCF because he saw UCF as kind of a brighter, greener pasture than what Arkansas provided him again. Uh, of course, Jaquinnon Jaquin Jackson comes over from Utah. Taylor Green has a running ability, not necessarily as much of a threat in my eyes as a KJ Jefferson, though you see the type in which uh, you know Sam Pittman likes his quarterbacks, right? Uh, but it has to be the offensive line that keeps Florida in the, or, excuse me, Arkansas in the game. And I don't know if they have the horses to do so up front. If Texas gets up early, I think it's a game in which they check out. Again, the build up to that game is one that you're going to continue to hear. He's on the hot seat. As a result, if it becomes one of those emotional games and it gets out of reach early, what do we have to play for now if we're already out of bowl eligibility in that race right now? I do think Texas comes away with the win. I think they have avenge that 2021 defeat uh the one saving grace there for arkansas is if that offensive line is up to what sam Pittman uh has coached up to in the past of course i do like andrew armstrong on the outside they have enough talent i think offensively to make some noise but if texas gets up early it's over so uh i i, I like texas at the end of the day if they get up early it's a blowout but by the end of the day it's a win regardless i have a i have a prediction for you guys around this if Arkansas looks like they're in disrepair, uh, they'll use that off week before Texas to let go of Sam Pittman. Yeah. Uh, as as a way to save face when the Longhorns come to town. That's what they'll do. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but if Arkansas's season goes sideways, that will be that that's an easy way out for a rivalry game to be renewed and nobody gets egg on their face. Uh, from a new perspective, just, just saying. Uh, Texas hosts Kentucky next. Uh, the uh, 
uh, Wildcats have a stingy defense, we think. Uh, I think that the, the Longhorns should win, but I'm not so sure this isn't one of those games where the first team to 20 wins as well, but maybe it's Texas is the only one that scores 20 or more. You know what I mean? It may be a 21 to 10, 21, 13, even though uh, Kentucky does have uh, Baron Brown, who I think is one of the better uh, uh, all around athletes in the country. Uh, Kick returner, punt, uh, kick returner, wide receiver, whatever. He's a big play waiting to happen. I just don't know if Brock Vandegrift is the guy to get it done for them. Uh, I think that Texas should uh, win this when it will take them, at least in my estimation, up to nine and two on the season. Uh, CJ, your thoughts on uh, Texas versus UK in Austin? Yeah, this will be the the win that gets Texas into the college football playoff. In my eyes, you'll be ten and one after a win against Kentucky. However, this is the scariest game on the entire schedule for me. Uh, in the middle of two very emotional, high intense rivalry games coming back from Arkansas, but looking ahead to Texas A&M in the finale. At the end of the day, Texas is at home, and I do think talent wise, there's more depth, there's more high end talent on the Texas roster right now. They come away with the win. Jerry Hamilton. Love the defense for Kentucky. Dion Walker's a stud. A linebacker that transferred from Georgia is a really good player. The corner, uh, maybe the most underrated corner in the country. He's going to be a drafted guy. Um, it's interesting for me, um, the last time Mark Stoops flew it, it, towards Central Texas, he thought he was going to be the AM coach and took a loss. And I mm. think he's going to take another loss here. Um, they've been really settled at quarterback. Now, they've all been transfers but they've been settled at quarterback in past seasons, even with transfers. This year, it's you know you took Vandergriff from Georgia. They had a look at him, and if he was going to be absolutely be the guy, you don't take Gavin Wimsett from Rutgers. You don't take another portal guy to compete with him. That is causes a little pause for me with Kentucky. I think they're going to be good up front on the offensive line. I think the running back that transferred from Ohio State is a perfect scheme fit. The uh, wide receiver transfer, Macklin, is a good piece to put opposite Barry and Brown. But are they going to be as good at quarterback as they have been the last had been the last two or three years? If they're not, this is a sleeper hot seat job because of what happened with Stoops and A and M last year. Mm. Ooh, Rodney, man. Uh, I, I think it's a win for Texas, no doubt. But I agree with CJ. It's scary for a lot of reasons. If the Brock Vandergriff thing works out, they got some wideouts that I like. They have the most returning production based on Bill Connolly's stat, the most returning production in the SEC. And you're right, defense, they seem to have ballers at every level of the defense. Deion Walker's a stud. The cornerback, Maxwell Harrison's a really good player. He's going to play on Sundays at five picks last year. Um, at the linebacker position, uh, Dumas Johnson's a really good player for them. Um, uh, D.A. Jackson's a good player. So I, I like the defense and – the only thing that concerns me, though, is why the running game won't be as potent, and I'm not as concerned about it. Liam Cohen. Liam Cohen is a Sean McVay disciple who was with Kentucky last season as their OC and in 2021. In 2022, he went to the NFL to be Sean McVay's uh, either quarterback's coach or OC or one of his coaches, and now he's the OC for the Tampa Bay Bucks on the Dave Canales, the new head coach there. He was a big difference. Go look at the numbers. He was a big difference in terms of the innovation, that run game. He's no longer there. They're going to try to do what he did, but I don't know if they really can in the run game. Good point. All right. You guys both, you guys all three have had Texas 10-1. and one heading it's an to issue. That's an issue. Uh -oh. I've got them at 9-2. It's an issue. Uh, I'm finishing uh, this thing off with my prediction last. I got a new oh. I hosted this thing. <laughs> I get to be last. Rod, take it away. You get to be first on AM. Uh all right. The Aggies, uh look, the Aggies on defense, man. I, I think that's what concerns me. Elko's a defensive guy. I think the defense is actually gonna be pretty good. Uh offensively, new offensive system. Uh, we'll see what happens with Connor Wigman. I, I worry about his health, but if he can, you know, be upright and actually be durable enough to make it to that game. There are some folks that project that he could be a first round pick if all goes right with him and he stays healthy. Um, I got Texas winning this game. So I got Texas 11 and one, but man, I played down here at Aggieland uh, in terms of the hostile environments. I'm glad they get to go to Michigan. I'm glad they get to go to Arkansas just to get them ready 
for that experience because the Aggies are going to treat it like a religious experience, man. I, yes. I don't think you're going to have an environment that's going to be that crazy. Michigan's going to be wild, big house, defending champions, but the Aggies have been waiting on this for a decade plus, so the fans are going to be just absolutely rabid. <laughs> uh, so they be ready for that, but I think Texas will be ready for it by that time. Headset communication, um, that may be something that's a problem in this environment. I don't even know. It may be possible you can't hear it in this environment. So make sure that your communications are on point, but I got Texas rolling big game for Quinn Ewers, man. This is a legacy game for him. So that means Rod has Texas 11, uh, 11 and one. Yep. Okay. So I can't back out of what I've been saying. I put myself in the box here, guys. This is going to be really unpopular. I had Texas 10 and two all season. Uh -oh. season. I know. Wow. Oh, wow. I can't back out. Maybe I should have taken an upset loss somewhere. But, look, I think AM's and going to put spike strips in the road on 35. I mean, however, I mean, don't stay close to College Station. Your headset communication probably won't work. It'll Something weird will happen. Um, the, that that sideline's going to be slippery. There's going to be grease everywhere. I mean, you think about all of it. Maybe the collie's going to bite Quinn on his calf before the game. I don't know. Something's going to happen. Um, but this is like an all or nothing game for AM. An absolute all or nothing game. And I've been saying 10 and 2. You never, there's the game changer. You never know about health late in the season. AM does not have the depth, but I can't back off 10 and 2. I've been saying 10 and 2 the whole time. So I got to take AM to win the game, guys. Ooh. Mm. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, a collie attack. A collie attack on Sark and Quinn Ewers, and they're both going to be parted off with dog bite injuries 10 minutes before the game. C.J. Vogel, wow. help me out here. Right there. We're going with the W for Texas. Yeah, yeah you did. That was upside down. It said M. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I say this for a number of reasons. One, I think that trip to Arkansas is going to greatly help Texas here, right? They're going to be a little bit more accustomed to the noise, that hostile environment. Uh, any any kinks that they didn't have with the headset communication, they're going to have that remedied and, and figured out going into College Station. It's going to be high environment. Of course, we've seen Quinn, Quinn Ewers play his best football in these kind of situations, right? Alabama both times. Uh, the back half of that Oklahoma uh, uh, game last year as well, he was as good as I've ever seen him. You know, Texas Tech at home, Oklahoma State for the Big 12 championship. As good as Quinn I, I've ever seen him. So this is a legacy game for him. And I think right now it's a as big a game as Sarkeesian will have coached in his career at Texas as well for a couple of reasons, right? This game is finally back. It's off of Twitter. It's back on the grid, gridiron. You don't want to fall behind in both your head on head to head with Oklahoma and Texas A and M. This is a game in which Elko still kind of uh, in that honeymoon phase with A and M. You want to put a stop to that. If this is a game in which A and M can get into the college football playoff game, in you want to put a stop to that. 100%. Not only is it a big game on the field, it's a big game for every other reason outside of football, right? So this has to be a game that Texas looks at as much as any as a must win on the schedule. Luckily for them, they have more depth than te Texas a at the moment. The offensive line's an issue. Connor Wakeman's health is an issue. And I don't know if they have a wide receiver one right now. They have some talented wide receivers, but do they have that go to third and seven? Let me figure out how to create separation and come away with the first down right now. I don't know. Noah Thomas comes to mind, but I'm not sure that's his style of play. They have a couple of, couple of issues offensively to figure out. The defense will be great. It's that offense that I, I worry about. And I think, uh, more than anything against the Texas defense that can get after the passer with that rush, that offensive line, that's going to travel. All right, let's go, Bobby. Dude, there's no way I'm picking A&M. <laughs> <laughs> I backed there's myself no in I had to. 0.0% .0 chance on this. I have Texas going 3-0 and against OU, Arkansas, and A&M this year. Uh, you know, that, that has not happened a lot in my lifetime when they played all three of those teams uh, back 25 years ago. Uh, so uh, it's saying quite a bit. My, my take on it is a little bit different than, than what I'm hearing from you guys in some, in one respect. Okay. Um, I think this is 
throw the records out the window game. I don't think A and M is going to be sitting there trying to get into the back, back into the the college football playoffs. Maybe I'm wrong, but I I just don't see that. Um, and so I, I feel like this could be a salvage game for Mike Elton. Yeah. Um, may or maybe it's like Mac Brown's first year against A and M, where Ricky Williams ended up winning the Heisman that day, right? Uh, or securing the Heisman, and they they had this valiant effort at home. Uh, just the role reversal there. Um, but I don't see A and M backing into the college football playoff. I think it's going to be a salvage game for them at some level. I think that Texas is going to be playing for a little bit more because I had them. I had them nine and two going in. I think they got to get to ten and two to make it into the college football playoff. So I think they're going to find a way. If they won nine games at that point, they're going to win ten against a six or seven win A and M team. That's my take on it. Uh, it's this is a hard schedule. Uh, because I can tell you right now, a couple of games in the Big 12 I didn't really worry about last year. All of these games against the SEC, to Jerry's point earlier, they all got big dudes, man. And they've all got individuals that can make off – not all of them. Most of them have individuals that can make off-schedule plays. So the ball bounces weird sometimes. It ain't round. This isn't basketball. Uh, so, anyways, long story short, I've got Texas 10-2. and two. Uh, I guess that means all of us have Texas in the either definitely in the college football playoff, yes, and or the uh, SEC championship game. Yep, but that, that's that's what it looks like. CJ Vogel and Rod Babers finished the year at eleven and one. Bobby Burton and Jerry Hamilton ten and two. That's our yearly prediction. Uh, one week from today, the Longhorns will take on Colorado State in DKR. We'll all be there. Hope you guys can join us. Uh, for Rod, CJ, and Jerry, I'm Bobby. Thanks to our producer, Matt Hutchison, for helping us put this together. Hook them.